All right, so the most important things we carry, of course, is our canteens. And we just drape them over our pack straps like this so that they're handy while we're hiking and you can fill them up easy. We rarely see a trail walker without his canteen. And then we um, filled our packs with this string and tarp and a series of knots. So I'll go ahead and take part of our pack, my pack for you. Um, so this right here that I'm taking off that we use for our straps, we call a burrito. It's a bivy sack from like World War II. It's a cotton or polyester blend or something. But makes good straps and then we can put our sleeping bags in it. And uh, helps keep them clean and on hot nights sometimes that's just all you sleep in because it's all you need. Um, then next is a rope that holds the pack together. And this of course is like hundreds of uses, but mostly we use it to, for our packs and for setting up shelters. And uh, so, and this packing style, I've seen it like, like lots of places use similar packing style. So. And I think it's based on like old, um, like what we were talking, Ernest Thompson, Seton, Baden Powell, those sort of things. Like I think they used similar, uh, similar setup back then. You know, David Westcott was talking about that in an interview I did with him, and he says he's trying to figure out where that came from because it's actually not in that old classic camping oh, really? style. And he came up with a, somebody sent him a, a pamphlet or a, like a just a, a page about it was an old military style oh, no way. way of rolling things so yeah oh that makes sense so uh, our tarp pulls everything together at the end of the hiking day you lay out all your stuff and usually i had mine set up so that as soon as i unrolled it i could go pretty much just like go to sleep if i needed i mean never did and then on the inside i don't have my food pack which i put in here but um you know i got some like long johns for if it gets cold, sweater for the same reason, or for a pillow. We did all of our cooking out of a, a stainless steel cup. This one's been used for a lot of other projects, so it's a little bit more warm than normal, but uh, yeah, we make all of our food in that. Um, I've got my fire set, which I keep in this bag, and my bow for that. I used to keep my fire set in my gatherings bag, but um, took a few too many dips in the river, <laughs> was sick of always having to dry it out, so I just started keeping it in here. So you know, you got your basics for your fire set, board and spindle, and I got a rock socket in here somewhere. Um, there it is. What type of materials do you have there for your fire set? So um, my personal favorite is uh, so tall, it grows mostly down in this area. Um, it grows a few other places, but it's real common to Arizona. It's uh, if it's not in the agave family, it's real close to it. Um, it's great. I mean, Arizona's got great stuff for fires anyway. But that's my favorite. It's so tall. And then a soapstone uh, socket I bought off of um, Hal Farnham. Do you know him? Mm -mm. Oh. So yeah, I've, and I always carry a couple fire sets. Uh, this is a cottonwood one. Something to put my coal on when, I, when it finally drops. I think I've got I think this is a uh, sage. So I always have a couple different, just because you never know. Some, for some reason, like some circumstances, different woods work better. Sometimes you'll be getting great fires on so tall, and something will happen, and then it's cottonwood that you're getting great fires on, and so it's just good to have a good mix. And then on the trail, we're always encouraged to do gatherings. So here's kind of a funky. Uh, Adelaide thrower I made. I didn't bring the darts, but um, usually those broke within the week anyway. Uh, but here's the Adelaide thrower. And then we encourage all the staff and the students or young walkers to add anasazi to make gatherings bags. So here's my gatherings bag. I chose the quiver style. There's like a book bag style that's pretty popular too. And so notebook, which pretty much take that everywhere. Um, a spoon that I made that's more of a cooking spoon than an eating spoon out of wood. We encourage, I mean, yeah, we just encourage everyone to make stuff 
like everything that they can out there just because it's uh, it helps with the program and it also just helps with your skills as an outdoorsman and it's fun like why not do it uh, some sinew or s synthetic sinew and string or and s needle uh, for stitching up the leather bags that we make call them gatherings bags because you need to gather from the earth um, physical things from the earth and then we also keep things like our journal and other things in there for spiritual awakenings from the sky so gathering from two places um, this is a uh, our chlorine drops take this bag balm out for chapped lips and for sealing projects and everything. Like you can see that like almost everything in this bag has more than one purpose. And then our knives that we get. So that we always hand out these old hicks, old hickory knives um, to the young walkers on pretty much their first day. And they're not very sharp and they're a lot longer but I filed mine down because I wanted a more functional knife and it's actually become a quite useful in the shorter style after they've been there a little bit we give them a mora this one of course has seen a lot of use so it's a little rusty but still totally functional and uh then um our curve knife or hook knife or crook knife whatever you want to call it for uh, making spoons or bowls or anything but yeah that's pretty much that's pretty much i can't think of anything i forgot Talk about the sheath on the old hick. Oh, the old hick? So, we'll usually use an agave or a century, sometimes called century sheath for these, but I found this piece of um, so tall that was um, is really soft in the middle, so I just stuck, shoved my knife in there because I knew that while it works as a pretty good knife uh, sheath, I can also split apart and use it for a fireboard too someday if I needed it. Um, and I just like the way it looks, and it's light, so it's to me it's worth it. But yeah, like that. Any other questions? So, other than that, what would you carry on the trail? Uh, we'd have our first aid kits and our comms communication kits, which have radios and sat phones and stuff in it. Then we have our paperwork that we have to do, you know, to keep our licensing and. Uh, boots, socks, and really this would be it for me. I always, you know, I, a light pack is a happy pack for me, so I always tried to go as light as I could. Um, but we, I mean, we'd make, we'd make mats out there if you needed them. If it was cold, I'd pile up a bunch of leaves, sleep on that, that would do something. To help keep the cold off. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much all that you had, and that's all you needed. I never really found myself wanting for anything. So, uh, trail walkers don't don't have sleeping pads. Nope, sleeping bags. Not in our program. Yeah, just sleep on the ground. And it's been funny because uh, I remember going out camping after I'd been a trail walker for a while, and I was like, oh, I can take my pad. I'm gonna sleep so good. And I slept awful the whole time. And then I went to a gathering, and I was like, man, I'm not taking my pad again. I just brought a wool blanket and slept on the ground on that, and slept just fine. So I don't know if it was some hippie thing, like I was losing my connection to the earth, or <laughs> uh, or what it was, but um, I hardly ever bring it now. Although I did take it camping a couple weeks ago, and it was it was pretty nice to sleep on. So maybe I'm getting soft, but you know, it happens to the best of us. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your food pack with what the students get for resupply? Yeah. So and and also the the sort of student staff about food oh so and it's Ozzy, um everyone gets the same food and it's uh real we try to keep the food pack really basic so it's um rice and lentils and uh some like nuts almonds uh walnuts and we've got sesame seeds flour some macaroni and cheese like milk to make things a little bit nice tang and sugar raisins apricots figs um salt pepper and bouillon so that's pretty much it. I might have forgot a couple things in there. But um, 
what? Oats. Oats, yeah, oats is potato, got to be oats. Uh, but I mean, real kind of basic ingredients, everything's powdered. And uh, that's all you get. And at first it sounds like, oh man, I'm gonna be eating pretty bad out here because none of that stuff really sounds like it goes together. Oh, I forgot tomatoes. We got the sun-dried tomatoes. And, and we get some like fresh foods like a carrot, an apple, an onion, garlic, potato. I think that's all that we get there. Um, but with all those ingredients, you really can like be pretty creative. And some of the kids have come up with the most creative foods that I've seen. Like uh, one thing that when I first started, I didn't think was really that big of a deal, but it's huge now and it's super tasty. Is they just cook their potatoes and they throw their macaroni in there later, put the cheese in and it makes the potatoes super, or the macaroni super creamy and delicious. And uh, they just get really creative with their food. I'm, uh, all the young walkers have, they're in charge of their food. Nobody's telling them how they need to eat it or what pace they need to eat it. I mean, we tell them, like, make sure you got some for the end of the week. But that's it. But they get to go be as creative as they want. And you really do see uh, them get really creative and uh, make these dishes that I never would have thought of. And they, they usually hate it at first, and then by the end they, they like all the food pretty well. So individual meals, everybody cooks in their individual cup? Yep, we cook all of, just over, five, well sometimes we're on stoves when there's fire danger, but just usually on the fire in their cup, and uh, it's pretty amazing how fast they learn how to cook, but it's, I mean, something everyone's pretty interested in, so mm -hmm. it's an easy skill to pick up when you're interested. Um, and I've even seen them make, uh, they'll take a cup and they'll put another cup on top of it, and then make all this stuff for a muffin in there, and that muffin will just puff up. It's perfectly delicious. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe. The Primitivus Project is made possible by the generous sponsorship of Wingate Wilderness Therapy. To learn more, visit WingateWildernessTherapy.com.